Coming up on the season finale of Inside Israeli Basketball, we retell the story of Maccabi Haifa's 2009-2010 season, an exciting year which included many obstacles as well as some thrilling moments. We take a look at some of the sights and sounds of this year's Final Four as the Super League crowns a new champion. Maccabi Haifa welcomes new head coach Elad Hassin, the first of many off-season moves as they prepare for next season. The Israeli Super League continues to expand its international exposure as Maccabi Haifa schedules its first NBA exhibition game against the New Jersey Nets. And in just his second season, Devon Jefferson has become one of the top players in the Super League. We discover why he is Maccabi Haifa's most valuable player. All that and more next on Inside Israeli Basketball. Coming off a thrilling postseason in 2009, this year Maccabi Haifa entered the season with a sense of purpose. Their taste of last year's championship game left them with an appetite for more of the same in 2010. The work to bond and achieve this goal began last October. Let's go! I love training camp, man. That's the best thing, you know what I mean? To get to know you, everybody, you know what your teammate do, what he don't do. Haifa was the best defensive team last year in the league, and uh, kind of building that chemistry with, with the teammates and just the offense and, you know, everything like that. We put some uh, some plays, some sets in, uh, in our system on, uh, on offense, and then, then we try to, to connect between uh, all the players, uh, again, to be one unit at the uh, will understand and everybody will know exactly what we are doing on the court. The month-long training camp ended with the season opener, a rematch of the 2009 championship game against Maccabi Tel Aviv. And we have the same result this evening as we did in the final in May. Maccabi Tel Aviv wins 76-68 in a hard-fought match between the two teams. Play against a very strong team in the beginning. Away. I think we're just finding our identity. Um, we all had to figure out what our role was going to be. We all came from different roles before. This couple of lost, you know, help us to wake up and uh, understand that we need to go as one unit and follow the coach and follow our leaders. You know, every start is a slow. There is a slow start, but um, I don't think we wasn't together at the beginning. We just have to know each other a little bit better and. Uh, you know, to, to find our rhythm and uh, to play better basketball. And I think after the break, you know, everybody just click. By the season's holiday break, High Five shaken off their slow start, climbs back into contention with Devon Jefferson leading the way. And there's Jefferson all the way, gets it. In traffic, 14 points, Devon Jefferson taking over this game. Everybody's new, everybody's new offense, new culture. Um, different coach, you know, it's very difficult. But, you know, you're a professional, you know, it's your job, so you gotta pick it up real quick and just, just play. Clearly, Devon Jefferson was our best player, and statistically, Devon carried the load all season long. But Ito had an MVP season. He was better than last year. He filled the number five position all year long. Uh, Ito had gotten his rebounds, his points. Uh, he was our defensive leader and our captain, and he played like that. I was very proud of him this season. Up by 16, they continue their hot winning streak. This makes it seven in a row for them in league play. Crucial to the team's stretch run was the developing presence of first-year guard Jason Rich. Oh, and look oh, at wow. Jason Rich going Jason. to the hole. Take this in your face. It's more important to be playing well down the stretch than, you know, maybe how you start. So um, you know, I thought it would be good to turn my, you know, level of, of aggression, my, you know, uh, impact that I wanted to have on the games. I wanted to turn all that up and just try to take it to a level that maybe people may not thought I could take it to, but I knew it was there. Jason stepped up. He was one of our uh, protege choices this season as being one of the leaders of the team, one of the best players. And his ability to hit three-point shots and drive to the basket. Also, Jason's athleticism was, was superior. I mean, he was such a, a marvelous athlete to uh, enjoy and watch. And he was a big part of the fact that we righted the ship early in the year. Injury and illness struck starters like Drol Khajaj, Ben Strong, and Devon Jefferson, creating a need for others to step up and fill the void. Enter Richard Roby, enemy Ben Zafir. 
has to fire a quick yes, one, and he buries it. Meet Medavid, the top three-point shooter in the entire league. Roby floats it. Oh, yes, yes, it! Richard yes, Roby taps an amazing third quarter for him. When we had the, the injuries, so the other players came in and did a great job. I think that the strength of, uh, of our team is uh, that we are not built on a on one or two players. I mean, we got some dominant players, but we know that we got a wide uh, roster that in any uh, certain game or even any certain qu uh, quarter, someone else can lead the team. As players depart to homes and loved ones all across the globe, they carry a notion that some of their goodbyes will be final, but the experiences and memories that they've had here in Israel will last a lifetime. This is part of being a professional basketball player, especially overseas. You just move around a lot, players move around a lot. It's kind of fun because you are uh, meeting new players every year. It's kind of sad because sometimes you really uh, like, like one of them and you're really close to him. You know, sometimes you stay in connections with, with the friends on the team through the internet, emails, phone numbers, some of the other guys, you know, you just watch them, see how they're doing on your basket. That's, that's the tough part about it. These are, every guy on this team, I, I really like him. They're, they're, they're good people first and foremost. I mean, I'm always going to have a great impression of, of this country. And, I mean, if I get an opportunity to come back here and, and play again, I, I won't hesitate to take it. Coming up, the Super League crowns a new champion. We have the exciting moments from this year's Final Four. Super League establishes a champion through an exciting winner-go-home Final Four tournament. The first round of the playoffs determines the Final Four through a best-of-five series. Hand off! Three seconds to go! Pulls up for three! Yes! Game over! Natania wins it! Natania was able to get past last year's runner-up Maccabi Haifa, and in the most exciting series, Hasharon nearly upset the defending champion Maccabi Tel Aviv, taking them to a fifth game. The final four was set. Netanya against Tel Aviv and Gilboa Galil against Apol Jerusalem. The semifinals included a pair of blowout games. After the dust settled, a surging Gilboa Galil moved on to face heavy favorite Maccabi Tel Aviv in the final. Tel Aviv in yellow, Galil in red, and you can hear the fans getting into it. The stadium will be colored in red and yellow all evening long. eight points after halftime, the Reds started the second half strong, led by Gonzaga University's Jeremy Pargo. Pargo buries the three, and Galil is in it to win it. Pargo for three, got it! Galil ahead for the first time since the first quarter. Dowell again from the corner, he's got it! Money! Dion Dowell on fire! Then Brian Randall of the University of Illinois took over. Randall has the ball, out on the break. Here's the A dunk. jam for the celebration! And, and Randall taking off. And the fat lady is singing. Gilboa Galil shocked Maccabi Tel Aviv winning their second Super League championship. To put this in perspective, this was just the third time in the past 17 years that Tel Aviv has not finished a season as Super League champions. And there it is, Galil Gilboa, are your Israeli champion. Before we go to break, let's meet Maccabi Haifa's new head coach, Elad Hassin. I call him one of the great uh, young minds in basketball in Israel. He's got a keen basketball eye. I have confidence in a lot. He's a young guy. He's one of the youngest coaches. We think he's going to do just fine, and we're proud to have him as our coach. 
After spending the past two seasons as assistant coach for Maccabi Haifa, Elad Hassin was hired as head coach for the first time in his career. The fact that I've been uh, with this club uh, two years and uh, I've seen the players and I've uh, talked to the players and uh, all the staff generally, I think it's uh, the easiest way to go to the head coach uh, position. I will do my best to be the best coach that I can be and the main thing is to help Maccabi Haifa to be the best team that, that it can be. Maccabi Haifa owner Jeff Rosen is excited to give Hassim the opportunity. He is a uh, what we call the basketball junkie 24 7. He, he understands the American game and the American market. You know, Alad was uh, instrumental in running our practices. To be ready to jump out because if you play like this, the ball will scream me, it's a three point shot. When you are a head coach of Maccabi Haifa and you work for Maccabi Haifa, the first target is to uh, get to the Final Four. And uh, we didn't succeed doing it. Uh, this year, uh, we did a great job the year before. And I think, first of all, is to getting into the Final Four and coming in the best shape. And when you're in the Final Four, you know, everything can happen. So first of all, is to build the roster, the right roster to lead us to the Final Four. And uh, achieving the Final Four will be the, the main target. Although he is the youngest coach in the Super League at age 30, Hassin has plenty of experience to bring to the table, including a brief stint under coach John Calipari. Well, I learned a lot from uh, Coach Calipari and uh, the way he uh, worked with the players, the way he developed players. And you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I would like to do the same. I would like to have young players develop them and work with them. And uh, you know, if they would like to leave after a few seasons to a better team, I did my job. But on the other hand, they will have to make the team succeed and uh, to give their heart on the floor. Hassin has already begun implementing his program at Maccabi Haifa, one he strongly feels can be successful in the Super League. Well, this is a small league and you have to have uh, players that can run, can play few positions. Like I said, I want to uh, put uh, in the team players that can play in this league, but on the other hand, players that can be a major impact in this league. I gotta prove myself for Jeff Rosen and first of all for myself that I can be the, the coach that I think I can be uh, and uh, helping uh, Maccabi Haifa to achieve uh, their goals. Up next, Maccabi Haifa is traveling to the U.S. for an exhibition game against the New Jersey Nets. Israeli teams have played exhibition games against the NBA. For the first time ever, the New Jersey Nets will be hosting Maccabi Haifa in a preseason game. The NBA was very facilitative and inviting. Uh, we reached out to uh, the Toronto Raptors. We also reached out to the Miami Heat and the Orlando Magic. Uh, the Nets were the one team that managed to have an opening and we seized it and both sides agreed. Both franchises are thrilled to put together this international event. I am a New Jersey Nets fan. So it's kind of special for me to have an opportunity to bring the Israeli uh, basketball team over to play my net. It's very exciting. You know, Maccabi Tel Aviv has been the one Israeli team to play in the States against NBA teams like the Knicks and the Clippers. So we're proud to be a representative of the league other than Tel Aviv to come in and do it. And we predict that in the future we'll play more teams. It's going to be a great experience for uh, players and uh, coaches. It's going to be uh, part of uh, our uh, preseason. Uh, it's not going to be a thing that we're going to play for a championship. We're going to work on things that we want to uh, work on for our team. And, uh, you know, if you can uh, combine uh, competition and uh, pleasure and having fun, it's, uh, it's always good. The opportunity for Maccabi Haifa to play in the United States helps bring national attention to the Super League. I think it's prestigious, uh, important. I think it gives uh, a claim and notoriety to the league. You know, the NBA plays European teams now. 
but not every country makes the cut. Uh, so we're very proud that Israel's recognized as a, as a top basketball European, if you will. Maccabi Haifa has more big plans in its sights. The organization hopes to play in Euro Challenge next season, where they will be up against some of the best competition in Europe. We think it'll get, bring prestige just like the NBA brings us prestige. Uh, it will be our first time and my first time playing in Europe, so it's kind of new for us. It's been uh, many years. I don't think any team from Haifa has ever qualified for Europe, so that'll be a first. And, and again, it's the goal of Maccabi Haifa to be a top European team as well as a top Euro uh, Israeli team. And, and playing in Europe and getting experience in Europe is critical to that goal. To go to Europe, it's a, it's a big change. It's a, not something that you cannot uh, ignore it. Uh, first of all, you got to have uh, more players in the roster. I think we're going to have uh, 10 players that can really play so we can share the minutes. And uh, the players will be fresh uh, to the end of the season and not uh, being injured or fatigued. I want young players that uh, are ready to play two uh, games a week and uh, players that are hungry, players that uh, want to show themselves in uh, the Israeli league and also in Europe. A lot of players like the European competition and when a team is playing in Europe like our team hopes to do, it only helps us bring in higher quality players. When we come back, Maccabi Haifa talks about their team MVP, Devon Jefferson. He entered this season as one of the league's most dominant players. Devon Jefferson's combination of speed, athleticism, and his knowledge of the nuances of the game promised Maccabi Haifa a chance for victory in every game this season. His effect on his teammates on both off the court and on the court just show how valuable Jefferson has been this season to Haifa. After winning sixth man of the year honors in his first season, Devon Jefferson returned to Maccabi Haifa as the team's go-to guy. Up to throw and slam dunk Jefferson. Climbing the imaginary elevator there and throwing it down with the scoring. Devon was one of the best players in the league. He was a finalist for MVP of the league and deservedly so. He carried the offensive burden and was a key man all season for us. Uh, Devon is, uh, is uh, something special. Uh, I, I played with a lot of Americans uh, in my career and uh, Devon is uh, something that I haven't seen so far because uh, it's a combination of a young player, very, very talented, with a very mature uh, personality. Uh, he's a great teammate, you know, he's, a, he's not a selfish player, he, he likes everybody on the team, everybody likes him. I'm very, very happy that he's on my team and, uh, yeah, and he's my friend. DJ is amazing, DJ is, uh, I think, two or three levels better than the rest of the guys playing, so... That's why he's so dominant, and that's why he's the anchor of the team. You know, he's the, he's the main event. Throws it up at Jefferson with the one hitter jam. Known for his high flying, powerful dunks, Jefferson was one of the top players in the Super League this season. Offensively, he averaged over 17 points per game, but Jefferson was also a major defensive presence, finishing fourth in rebounds. His body is very... he can move both sides, he can make baskets from penetration, from outside. Offensively, he's very, very talented, but what I like him more is his... his uh, Attitude is very mad on the games, he wants to succeed, he doesn't afraid from nobody and he fights till the end, he fights with everybody and he's very, very strong mentality 
and that's what makes him, you know, very, very good player because he pushes himself always to do more and more, and this is very important for players that want to be on the highest level. We to get another day, another day at work. This is what we do every day, our day at work. Devon aspires to make it into the NBA in the near future, but if he does return next season, Heifel will be glad to welcome back the most dominant power forward in the Super League. Devon is very, very talented on the highest level in the world. Definitely NBA player. Uh, you don't see a lot of talent like this all Europe. And I play all over Europe. I play two years abroad and play in European game all years. And I think uh, in one, two years we can see him in the league. A terrific player and, and I know his dream is to go to the NBA at some point and I think he's well on his way. Devon was our big guy, he was our go-to guy and he was our main statistics guy. A marvelous athlete, played with great attitude. I know he loved Haifa and Haifa loved him. We'd be proud to have Devon play for us anytime. That wraps up this season of Inside Israeli Basketball. Remember, you can get all of your Israeli Super League highlights and news at triangleinternet.tv. I'm Becky Griffin. Thanks for joining us. So, what was your favorite part of the show this season? Please send your comments and suggestions to info at trianglefs.com.